hey, Plumber Tom here. Welcome to this video where I'm going to show you how to caulk plumbing fixtures using acrylic caulk or silicone caulk. I'm going to do this on some practice boards so that I can show you some technique and you can have a good look at what to do and what not to do. Let's do this. Let me start out by saying that if you're going to be a plumber or if you're involved with plumbing, you have to be able to do a good job with caulk. This is the final product. This is a piece of art. This is what is going to be seen forever after, and you have to be able to nail this. So take the time to learn how to do this and to do it right. Make sure to like this video, subscribe to this channel. You can help me out as I continue to produce awesome videos like this. All right, let's go over acrylic caulk. I'm gonna show you how to do this on a lab board that was designed for training how to caulk at the tech school that I teach at. For acrylic, you're going to need a sponge, the caulk, a caulk gun, and a bucket of water. I like to keep a screw in the end of my caulk just to keep that from drying out. You wanna remove the screw from the end of the caulk tube and then insert it into the caulk gun. Next, you're going to need a bucket of water and a wet sponge. You'll squeeze the sponge in that water to make sure that it's very wet all the way through, but you don't want it soaking when you're actually using it. So you want to wring it out really well, and then it will be ready for use. So now I'm going to show you here what not to do. We're using an acrylic first. I'm just going to practice here with the acrylic. So I'm putting down a bead of caulk. And this one's, I mean, it's okay. It's moving along okay. But where it's gonna go wrong is when I go to actually smooth this out. So here we go. I'm going to apply too much pressure and go too fast. So I'm just zipping down the side here. I'm pushing too hard. And do you see how it's smearing out everywhere? Oh, that's disgusting. Who's gonna want that? Oh, look at all that globiness. Look, that's not how you do it. You don't go fast and you don't push hard. You go slow, methodical, a little bit of time. You can see how much that leaves behind. It makes quite a mess. It's kind of hard to clean up. I'm going to try to clean up with a sponge, but um, you know, so that's definitely not the way we want it. All right, let's see how this should be done properly. I'm going to apply another bead of caulk. We'll come along the long side of this, apply some around the corner. And when I'm ready to smooth out that seam, I'm going to be consistently wiping my finger on the sponge, coming back and forth. I want you to watch how many times I go back and forth between wiping the caulk and wiping it on the sponge. Wiping the caulk, wiping it on the sponge. Constantly doing that. That's how you get a nice, smooth, even surface. I'm not pushing too hard. I'm not going too fast down the side. Once it's all smoothed out and I'm just trying to polish it, then, then I might go a little bit faster and just zip down there, but I'm not pushing hard because I don't wanna push that caulk all the way out of the corner. Now, as I'm pushing that caulk and putting it onto the sponge, I'm going to need to get that sponge clean. And I can do that by just squeezing that into the bucket repeatedly. That caulk is just gonna dissolve into the water so I can push it off into there, squeeze it over and over. As I squeeze that, it cleans the sponge and I'm ready to use the sponge again. Now, I want a wet sponge, not a soaking sponge. And so I squeeze it out, wring it out, and now it's ready for me to use again. Now, for plumbing fixtures, we wanna make sure to leave plenty of caulk in between the fixture and the surface that it's being sealed to. A sink, for example, may have more than a quarter inch gap all the way around when it's just sitting on top of a countertop. So you're gonna to wanna to leave plenty of caulk in there. If you push too hard, it may seal up, you know, the in inner seam there. But if you can leave some more, it's gonna have a better seal, it's gonna last longer. So to accomplish that, we're careful not to push too hard to where it's pushing all of that caulk out. We leave some of it there and we just smooth it out. Let me point out again how consistently I'm going back and forth between the wet sponge and the caulk surface. By continually doing that, I can get rid of the excess caulk so it's not smearing where I don't want it. It also wets my finger to create a smoother seal. Let's have a closer look at the inside corner here. I'm coming at it from all three angles, from each of the horizontal sides and then the vertical coming up. 
and just trying to get it as smooth as possible from all three angles. This is how you would caulk a shower. If you've got corners in the shower, inside corners, you want to make sure to go over it from each angle until it's totally smooth. That does it for our acrylic demonstration. Let's now have a look at silicone caulk and how to apply that. Let's go over how do you open a new caulk tube. We can cut that using the handle of one of our caulk guns. You want to cut it on a slight angle and then with silicone especially, you're going to need to puncture the seal down inside of that nozzle. So on the caulk gun, there's this long wire that you can use and you push it down through. There's that kind of a foil seal at the top of that tube. Punch a bunch of holes in there and then make sure to wipe that silicone clean off of the caulk gun so it's not smearing everywhere. That's going to be one of the things you'll notice here with silicone. We're not using water, we're not using a sponge, but we're using paper towels and we're wiping consistently so that it doesn't smear everywhere. It's crazy how fast it can make a mess. So be conscious of where that caulk is, where it's going, and try to keep it as very clean as possible. This is especially true when you're out there working as a plumber. You can make the biggest smeary caulk mess if you're not careful. All right, let's give this a try. This time we're gonna do a similar bead. We'll come across the front. I'm gonna come around here with the caulk bead, bring it down the short end and all the way down the long side. Now when you're applying caulk, it doesn't have to be like a perfect smooth thing. It's nice if you can get a nice smooth first round. You can see again that I'm applying about a quarter inch thick. I wanna make sure there's plenty in there because I'm gonna caulk around this plumbing fixture and I want plenty of caulk to be left behind. Each time after I've finished applying caulk, I'm going to relieve the pressure from the caulk gun so that it's not oozing out the end and make sure to wipe that tip so I don't accidentally smear that caulk in places I don't want. And from here, I'll use these paper towels. I fold them over, use it as many times as I can. We're also gonna use the window cleaner and put it on the spray nozzle. And I'm just gonna lightly spray, nothing heavy. You can see I kind of waft it over there, a couple of spritzes. That's enough to be able to work it. So now I'm gonna work it just like the acrylic caulk, coming back over and over, wiping consistently. I'm not gonna push hard, I'm not gonna go for a long stretch. Just a little bit and wipe it clean, and then a little bit more and wipe it clean. And it's that window cleaner that's gonna keep that silicone from sticking to areas around that fixture I'm caulking where I don't want the caulk. So that's where it's really helpful. Similar to water, that window cleaner is going to give me a nice wet finger surface that will leave a smoother finish. So you can see again, consistently wiping it over and over. When the paper towel gets full, there's lots of globs on there. That's where you can fold it over, use it again on another side. And that way that paper towel can be used for as long as possible. Once it's full, we just throw them away and get another one. But you can see how I'm taking time to go over this, carefully smoothing it out, small sections at a time, not applying too much pressure, over and over, until I'm satisfied that it has a nice, smooth, clean surface. No bumps, no smears, no lines or seams. Oh, and look at this, it was oozing out while I was caulking, so gotta make sure to keep that clean or it'll make a mess. And this is even after I've relieved the pressure. So you gotta be constantly conscious of the end of this. Now when I'm done siliconing, I'm going to put the cap on. I'm just gonna put a screw in, screw that all the way down tight, and then we can use that silicone tube the next time around. Same thing applies to the acrylic as far as cutting and sealing up the end. We wanna be able to use these over and over until the tube is empty. Once I'm satisfied with that caulk seam, I need to go back through with a paper towel and very carefully wipe up all of the leftover window cleaner that's been sprayed onto there. You can see it's kind of around the outside of the caulk seam. This is why you don't want to go real heavy when you're spraying on it because you have to clean all that up. You want to leave it dry. And of course, in doing this, I don't want to touch that caulk seam. Once I've perfected that, got to be really careful. But it's important to clean up after yourself and not leave window cleaner behind. Now you know how to caulk plumbing fixtures. It's time for you to get out there and practice. Hopefully this is helpful to you. If you'd like to help me, you can like this video, subscribe to this channel, and check out my other learning resources in the comments.